Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports and subscribers. So what's going on, guys? Now, um, interesting video I came across on Fight Hype, you know, with Bernard Hopkins' uh, upcoming bout, his upcoming, you know, farewell fight against Joe Smith Jr. Uh, he had his media day in Philadelphia at the Johan Boxing Gym. And he said a lot of interesting things, as he, as he always does, as he's prone to, to do. But, you know, this was extra interesting. Something he said about Roy Jones Jr. Um, and I got to be honest, you know, being a big B-Hot fan, what he's done to the sport, he was the guy who, who made me start following boxing in the first place. I love Bernard Hopkins. And um, I actually have a special video planned for that week of the fight, so stay tuned for that. But um, Bernard Hopkins, in this video, he comes across to me as... as, as Know, not very humble, um, disrespecting in, in many ways. You know, Roy, a all-time great, and Roy Jones Jr. kicking him while he's down. As you know, he's still fighting, and he's a far cry from the fighter he once was. As is Biop, although he's still good, still a far cry from the fighter that he once was. Um, so I'm gonna play the clip, and I'll, I'll give my little analysis after that. So here's what uh, Barter Hopkins said about Roy Jones Jr. Some of the similar things that you talked about you're going to be doing after boxing. He, he can't seem to quit. What if you look phenomenal? How are you going to not have the urge to get in that ring? Especially if the money is there. You know, because let me tell you something. Like, it's going to take me to do something really stupid or invest in something like... Uh, when the next alien is going to hit the planet and dump all my money on it, like one shot, to be in position and say I got to go in there for that, M-O-N-E-Y. But you can't compare Roy Jones to Bernard Hopkins. He started off fast. He started off popular than me. And we are friends. But always remember, it ain't how you start. Have you ever thought, being a college guy or a college grad, that a guy who didn't go to high school and come out of the penitentiary in 88 after going five years and walked off every nine years of parole without a parking ticket, sitting here intelligent talking to you? Would you, could you ever imagine that just because you started off one way don't mean that the ending of the book has to be the way you started. Most people remember the end of the book more than the beginning and the middle. To make them talk about the book, they must have a memory of the ending. I am the ending of my book. And here, the other stuff that you're wondering what I'm going to be doing afterwards, if you don't live on this planet, you wouldn't know. But every time you turn the TV on and you see a major boxing match, who's doing a breakdown? Who's doing a perfect execution of that HBO took a segment and formed it around me when I broke down the Andre Ward and the Sergey Kovalev fight about the matter throwing the ball? Right? Who come up with that phrase? Who come up with the phrase of, Co uh, of, of Canelo versus Coda and that breakdown on style, on position? I'm glad that I always was multitask and not just being one dimensional. Roy Jones was one dimensional. And when that one thing left him, a mediocre fighter knocked him out. How deep is that? But when you are multitask and you don't rely on just one thing that can make you great now, don't get me wrong. But how great for long? Uh, Alright, so there you have it, you know, B Hop <coughs> Damn it. So B Hop, um, I think, you know, although I don't like what he said, I think uh he made some valid points, you know. Uh people in the back in the day when they both fought, Roy was that guy. Roy was the face of boxing. Roy was boxing. And you couldn't talk about boxing without talking about talking about Roy Jones Jr. And he was more popular than Bernard, you know, from an aesthetic standpoint. 
definitely more exciting to watch than Bernard. But like Bernard said, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And Bernard's longevity and the way he's been able to dominate and, and, and still be a good fighter um, in his, into his 40s now at 50 years old speaks to a lot about how great he is. Um, and I think, you know, if he would have just left it at that comparison and just saying that, like, if you, you can pers pers persevere through anything and it's not about how you start, but how you finish, I think that would have been fine. But for him to for him to say that Roy Jones Jr. was a one-dimensional fighter at this point when it's your last fight, this is supposed to be about you. This is supposed to be about celebrating the career that was you, that, that you've had. And he's taking this time to to take shots at Roy Jones Jr., who's a great fighter as well. So with that being said, you know, I'm a Beehaw fan, but I thought that was pretty um, disrespectful. And he, 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 honestly, as much of a Bernard Hopkins fan as I am, prime for prime, as we already know, Roy Jones Jr. was a better fighter than Beehaw. No way around it. Um, Roy... Is gonna be fighting very soon. I, I wanted to do a video on it, but I really don't want to talk about it. I'm so sick of talking about, talking about Roy Jones and you're fighting. I, I, I think he should retire. But um, Bernard Hopkins, honestly, man, it was messed up. Roy Roy is not one dimensional. His ability to, cause look, although, cause look, Roy had an unconventional style. Roy relied on his speed. Roy was 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 very reliant on his reflexes. There's no debating that. He does make a valid point that when those things, his reflexes, when the speed, when those things did decline, you know, the Glenn Johnsons of the world, the Tarvers of the world, they knocked him out. But, by no stretch of the imagination does it make him one dimensional. It just means that he didn't know how to adjust his style. The way b -Hop kind of adjusted his style as he got older, Roy didn't make that adjustment. So, with that being said, Roy was still very not um, multifaceted when he fought. Because um, to fight the way he did, you got to have, just beyond the speed and reflexes, you got to have understanding of punch angles, ability to slip punches, to counter off them like he did so many times. If you guys go watch the James Tony fight, when they're kind of posturing and Roy's kind of posturing. Because, you know, Roy, Roy said he used to watch uh, animals and, and chickens move or something like that. And, and he would kind of use their moves, and, and that's how he developed his unconventional style. So if you kind of see there's a, in the James Tony fight, a very famous moment. They're kind of like posturing. Roy's kind of like this, and then Tony's playing along. Tony's like this, and then Roy does it again, and then he slips his head to the left, and boom, throws a right hook and catches Tony with something and knocks him to the canvas. And it was just like his ability to understand range, distance, timing. You can't be a one-dimensional fighter and, 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 and fight and dominate the way LeBron Jones was for so long. Sorry, you can't move from middleweight to heavyweight and be one-dimensional. So, Roy or Bernard, I love you, bro. You're my favorite fighters of all time, but you're dead or wrong for that. And honestly, in this case, you should be ashamed for for, for, for taking this time to kind of kick the man while he's down. I got I to gotta disagree with you on, on what you said. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, Bernard Hopkins says Roy Jones Jr. was one-dimensional. What do you guys think? Do you think he's in the wrong or do you think he's in the, in the right? Either way, let me know in the comments down below. Take the time to subscribe and you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.